I wanted to talk about the Euro 2020 final today, but quite frankly, there's something else that's way more important that we need to discuss. This isn't anything new, which is really sad. As some of you may know, the last three penalty takers for England were Marcus Rashford, Jadon Sancho, and Bukayo Saka. They all missed their penalties, and as a result, England did lose, and also as a result, they have been subjected to a lot of racial abuse. I've seen many, many comments with monkey emojis, the n-word, just all these disgusting comments. And I knew the very seconds after Rashford, Sancho, and Saka missed their penalties that this would happen. And that's just so sad. And for people who are gonna justify this by saying, oh well, they get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a week. Click off the video, touch some grass, Please. Seriously, if you do this kind of stuff where you go into players' comments and just racially abuse them, or just abuse them in general, you're not welcome here. We as football fans do not want you. Please leave. Go be some sad, pathetic, lonely human being somewhere else. Because you are in no way a football fan, let alone an England supporter. Now this whole thing was gonna happen in the first place, but what made this more worse than it could have ever been were the political officials up top and also the Prime Minister who were against taking the knee. There were officials quite literally encouraging fans who were against the knee to boo the knee. Quick note though, I understand that the Black Lives Matter organization themselves, not really all sunshines and rainbows. But that's not what taking the knee is about. It's the message itself of inclusion and equality. You know, two things that should just be common sense, not politics. But the reason why I wanted to make this video was because I wanted to go deeper into just how disgusting some people are. If you thought bandwagoners were bad enough, just wait until you hear about alt-right bandwagoners. These are people who will criticize the English team for being too woke, but once the English team actually starts winning matches, they'll just act like nothing ever happened and just be like, oh, go England, go England. They'll say shit like, oh, I'm proud of you, England. Oh, go you black players that I was against like a couple weeks ago. But once England lose a match, and in this case, it was the final, they'll go right back to that same agenda of, England was so woke that they lost the final. That's how they lost the final. Because they were too woke. Do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? Do you understand, realize how f***ing insane I sound? Listen, if you base your entire shtick on the idea of duh duh, cancel this, you are probably one of the most unbearable human beings to ever be around. Darren went from wah wah, knee bad, disrespectful to fans, when I saw this, I was like, good for you, go on, go on! <laughs> to jumping onto the English bandwagon. He also tweeted right before the final about some injury Phil Foden had, as if Phil Foden had made any impact the entire tournament. And then, when England were struggling on penalties, he tweeted this. C come on, man. Come on! It's just so funny, these motherfuckers go from England proud to oh Marxism has ruined the beautiful game it's ruined our glorious white Englishmen and speaking of Rashford many tweeted that he was arrogant yeah it was a bad penalty but we all know exactly why they use the word arrogant there's also Paul Joseph Watson also known as another sad human being on the face of this earth. Chelsea fans at the Champions League final audibly booed before the start of the game as players took the knee Uh, hello, base department. The funniest thing is that he got so angry at a tweet that he quote tweeted it four separate times. I just wanted to mention also that Paul Joseph Watson was crying over a gay car. A gay car. The whole BLM movement is insulting to many because it seeks to- He's using a Millwall supporters blog post. I don't think I need to say anything else. Oh, and then also this tweet's pretty ironic. But then we go deeper. That's right. This hellscape we're in right now somehow gets worse. Many in the world's most pathetic echo chamber have been talking about how Southgate's decision to have Rashford, Sancho, and Saka take pens was him trying to be woke. Stop! 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 And then Stop they right 72 there. games. Stop That's right different. there. Stop right. Stop. Yes, you heard me correctly. Sure, Southgate putting a 19-year-old to take the deciding penalty probably wasn't that great of a decision, but 
to say it's woke? Huh? There's also this really psychopathic, honestly really sad too, conspiracy theory on this whole situation. Firstly, you know the post is off to a great start when it says, Southgate intentionally picked blacks, and also has quotes like, Stellar tool for gaslighting native English men into worshipping blacks. Secondly, whoever made this is one of the most sad and pathetic human beings on the face of this earth. This is that what zero pussy does to a motherfucker type beat. And thirdly, please, touch grass. There's also sad cases saying that the racial abuse is manufactured in order to create some narrative. There's even one post where this guy's like, notice who's making these comments. Are they white? Yeah, I don't know. The guy with the handle Jack Green with the Blue Lives Matter flag might be. These people are just like so-called NASCAR fans. Back last year when Bubba Wallace was calling out racism, all these motherfuckers on social media were like, never watching NASCAR again or something along the lines of that. But then you realize that these people didn't even watch NASCAR in the first place. I went to a race a couple months ago expecting booze for Bubba Wallace and all I heard was cheers. It's proof that these people just try to add fuel to the fire. And it's the exact same thing with these absolute fools. They try to disguise themselves as football fans and fail miserably as they have worse takes than people who base their opinions on FIFA stats. Also, I never really got this idea of don't bring politics into football when it comes to immigration. Like, it's literally not politics to show off your identity. Just shut the f up. Also, these immigrants, right, have taken you farther than any other English side has in the last 55 years. So please, just sit down, shut the f up and stop associating yourself with this sport. At the end of the day, this all needs to stop. Unfortunately though, it won't, because social media companies couldn't give less of a f So the next best thing we can do really is report all these hateful comments and go into these comment sections of Sokka, Sancho, and Rashford and just show them love. Also, one other thing regarding that Dembele video. I hate how some people have used that situation to attack another movement. That's right, I'm talking to you, David, you f***ing bozo. I've been seeing this go around quite a bit as of recent as well. It's not the way to go. The last thing you want to do is give social media companies even more power. And it makes it even worse for the people who are vulnerable to social media attacks because now their information can be breached much easier. We as people shouldn't be having to do the social media's job here. It is their job and responsibility to actually get rid of this racism and abuse. That's the end of this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to follow my Twitter for any video updates, tweets, all that kind of stuff. Follow my TikTok trying to get to 5,000 followers. You can follow my Instagram and my Twitch, uh, and until then, I'll see you guys.